Welcome back, scholars, for another week of Making Meaning with Visualizing. I'm Miss Keller. I'm so happy to be back learning with you again this week. Last week, we used our background knowledge and the words or phrases in texts, specifically poems, to make pictures in our mind. I have loved seeing your responses coming in this week from your work last week. It's amazing that we get to see so many different work all the way across the city. We've got quotes from people up in Loyal Heights all the way down to Wing Luke. And we even have some work coming in from Arbor Heights. As you read Natalie's writing, I want you to think, what was she writing about? She gave us some great clues. Black and white feathers, sitting on eggs and waddling. It really helped me picture a plump penguin waddling its way over to its egg. Scholars, this week we are going to continue to use our background knowledge from our experiences and the words or phrases from the text to help us visualize. But now we're also going to use that information to get to know the main character. For today's lesson, you will need a talk partner. Now remember, it's important to share your thinking because it helps you understand the learning better. You can choose to talk to an imaginary friend like our football star Russell Wilson. You could go grab your brother or sister or a sibling. You could go talk to one of my friends that I have here. I'm going to give you a minute now to go get your partner. When we begin our visualizing today, we're going to use the same sentence stems that we did last week. I've got them right here for us. We have, and repeat after me, I pictured blank. All right, try that now. I pictured blank or I imagined blank. Ready? I imagined blank. To get us going today, we are going to be reading The Birthday Swap by Loretta Lopez. And we're gonna be focusing on what was happening in the story. This book is about a girl named Lori and a birthday party. What do you know about birthday parties? Close your eyes and imagine what is happening at the party. Who is there? What sounds do you hear at your party? How might you be feeling at the birthday party? Today I'm going to be giving us some extra time to think so that we get really clear pictures in our mind. Go ahead, open your eyes, turn to your partner, and share about your birthday party now. Scholars, I was sharing with my learning buddies that I imagined my family singing me happy birthday, we're eating delicious chocolate cake. And it's quite loud because when my family gets together, we like to talk a lot. When we celebrate birthdays, the feelings are really positive and enthusiastic. Remember, you might have different pictures in your mind with different things happening because we all have different experiences. That's the wonderful thing about visualizing. It, it makes it so much fun, especially when we share with each other. All right, scholars, 
now that we have our birthday parties going in our mind, we're going to get started on the story. The birthday swap. Swap means switch. The birthday swap. My name is Lori. I'm the youngest one in my family. I grew up in a town near the border between the United States and Mexico. A border is an invisible line separating two countries. I grew up in a town near the border between the United States and Mexico. Half my relatives live in Mexico and half of them live here. This is a picture that my dad took at a party in Mexico the year I turned six. My brothers Ed and Beto and my sister Cookie were teenagers then. That was the year of the best birthday party ever. And this is the story of how it happened. It was a Saturday morning the summer in the summer, the day before my sister Cookie's birthday. Every year we celebrated Cookie's birthday with a big family reunion and cookout at Tio Daniel's house in Mexico. A family reunion and cookout is a yearly gathering of a lot of family members, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, cooking a lot of food together outdoors. And Tio in Spanish means uncle. So every year we celebrated Cookie's birthday with a big family reunion and cookout at Tio Daniel's house in Mexico. This year, I wanted to get Cookie my own present instead of just adding my name to whatever my parents were giving her. But I couldn't come up with an idea for a gift. When I told my mom, she smiled and said, she doesn't expect you to give her a present, mija. Mija is Spanish for my daughter. She doesn't expect you to give her a present, mija. But I want to, I said. Only she's so much older than me, it's hard to find the right thing. Well, think, Dad said. What would you want? I thought about it. My birthday wasn't until December. A horse, I shouted. My parents looked at each other. Too big, Dad pointed out. What else? A kitten! Mom shook her head. Cookie's allergic. So am I. Try again, Dad said hopefully. What would you want more than anything in the world? The perfect gift? A puppy. Dad smiled. Mom looked stern. That means she looked strict. Mom looked stern. A puppy is a big responsibility. Cookie's starting her senior year this fall. She won't have time to care for a pet. I could help. Tell you what, Mom said. Why don't you come with me on my errands? That's chores. Why don't you come with me on my errands? Maybe you'll find something. Okay? Scholars, I'm going to pause here, and I would like to know. What's happening so far in this story? Go ahead and turn to your partner now. I was just talking with Llama Llama here, and Llama Llama said that Lori is excited because it's her sister's birthday tomorrow, and she wants to get her a present, not just the one that her parents are giving her. But she's not sure what to get her, and she gives several ideas, a horse, a puppy, a kitten, but those aren't quite right. Llama Llama then made a prediction. Llama Llama said, maybe she'll find something when she goes on the errands with her mom. Let's find out. Mom and I drove over the bridge and across the border. Our first stop was Tia Sabina's house. Tia is Spanish for aunt. Our first stop was Tia Sabina's house. I loved visiting Tia Sabina. She was a baker and her house smelled good, like cakes and melted candle wax. Tia Sabina was finishing up a huge cake. She kissed me and patted my cheek with her soft, sugary hands. How are you today, she asked. Not so good, Tia. I don't have a present for Cookie. Oh, don't worry about that, Tia said. Maybe you'll think of something while your mother and I discuss the cake business. Mom and Tia went into the kitchen. 
I wandered around and looked at the cake decorations, but I still didn't come up with any great ideas. Our next stop was the Mercado, the market in Mexico. Mercado is Spanish for market. Our next stop was the Mercado. The market in Mexico was totally different from the supermarket at home. For one thing, the Mercado was always noisy and crowded. Shoppers, vendors, that means the people who sell goods. Shoppers, vendors, musicians. There was even a special section for live animals. Mom headed straight for the fruit and vegetable stands. I saw a huge bin of shiny red tomatoes. Cookie loves tomatoes. I thought, I picked one up. Somehow, a tomato just wasn't special enough. What do you think? I asked a kitten at my feet. Meow, it meowed in a tiny voice. I put the tomato back and walked with mom to the curio shop where all the toys for tourists were sold. Great things, ceramic piggy banks, marionettes, maracas, glass animals, and big sombreros. You'll see in the picture scholars, scholars what those things are. The piggies are clay and they're green and pink and yellow. The marionettes are hanging from string, strings, they're puppets. The sombreros are the tall hats. The maracas are instruments. There was ceramic piggy banks, marionettes, maracas, glass animals, and big sombreros with fancy sewing and sequins. I could have wandered around in that shop for hours, but I realized after a few minutes that nothing was quite right for Cookie. On our way back to the car, we passed the piñatas. Piñatas, you'll see in the picture, are hung up as a party game and they're often filled with candy and hit with a big stick while the person is blindfolded. And then they try and break it open so the candy comes out. On our way back to the car, we passed the piñatas. Just a second, Mom said, and then began talking quietly with the piñata maker in Spanish. I walked around and made friends. My favorite was the donkey. Mom, how about this? I asked. I think Cookie's too old for a piñata, don't you? She said, taking my hand as we walked back to the car. Don't worry, it'll be okay. All right, scholars. We're going to pause here, and I want you to think about what Lori's been doing and where she's been going. And what do you think she's going to do next? Go ahead and turn to your partner now. Scholars, I was just sharing with Lama Lama that Lori's been to a lot of different places. She went to the market, and she went to the curio shop, the pinata shop. The, her aunt, her Tia's house, to get a cake. And she kept looking for things for her sister, but they weren't quite right. The tomato wasn't special enough. The curio shop had a lot of fun things like marionettes or puppets, but they weren't right for her sister Cookie. So I'm predicting that she is going to find something else for her sister in a surprising place that she didn't think about before. So we'll see if we're right. The next morning, I was the last one up. Our house was crazy. Everybody was running around getting ready for a big party. Mom had even made me a new dress to wear to church. She fixed my hair with blue ribbons. Boy, I am sure going fancy to church today, I said. My mother just raised her eyebrows and smiled. Grown-ups, Our church was in Mexico, so the whole service was in Spanish. Usually, I like to sit quietly and just look around at the paintings and stained glass. But that day, all I could do was fidget. To fidget means to make small movements.
but all, that day all I could do was fidget. When I saw my brothers leave early, I wanted to go with them, but Cookie whispered that they had to pick something up and they'd meet us later. After church, we drove to Tio Daniel's house. I'm going to pause here. What's happening in this part of the story? What has Lori been doing? What do you think might happen when she goes to Tio Daniel's house? Go ahead and turn to your partner now. I know, right? We couldn't believe she hasn't found a present yet. She's so fidgety in church. I'm wondering if it's because she's nervous about, yeah, not having a gift. Hmm. Do you think she'll find one at T.O. Daniel's house? I don't know, Rainbow Fish. Maybe. Let's keep reading and find out. After church, we drove to T.O. Daniel's house. When we arrived, something incredible happened. Surprise, happy birthday, Lori. Feliz cumpleaños. Feliz cumpleaños means happy birthday in Spanish. Surprise, happy birthday, Lori. Feliz cumpleaños. Everybody was there. My grandparents, aunts, uncles, all my friends, neighbors, cousins from both sides of the border, everyone. But I said, it's not my birthday. Well, it's like this, Cookie explained. Because my birthday is in the summer, I always get a big party. But since your birthday is in winter, when it's too cold, you never get one. So this year, I thought I'd swap with you. After all, I'm getting a little old for this. So Cookie smiled, happy birthday. I was so surprised, I hugged my sister and ran to join the party. What a day. We swam in Tio Daniel's pool, we played tag, we ate, there was a lot of food. I can't even remember it all. In the center of the table was the beautiful cake I'd seen at Tia Sabina's the day before, with seven candles on it. Six plus one for good luck. When it was time for the pinata, I got an, another surprise. It was the donkey. Everyone got three tries to hit it. I felt a little bad about that, but mom said it was okay since all that candy made the donkey's stomach hurt. The best surprise came last. It was a plain box with a bow. Dad said, this is from all of us. Guess what was inside? It was something I wished for more than anything in the world. A puppy. I picked her up. She wiggled and licked my face. Her name is Spicy, I said, and everyone clapped. I played with Spicy and had some more cake and ice cream. The sun started to set. A mariachi band arrived. Scholars, a mariachi band is in the Latinx culture. They have musicians coming with um, guitars and trumpets, and they wear large sombreros. You'll see that in the picture on the screen. A mariachi band arrived, and soon everyone was dancing. After a while, all the kids got tired and started to fall asleep on the grass. I tried to stay awake, but I guess I fell asleep too. Cookie said the party got really loud. I didn't wake up though. Mom said that when it was, Mom said that when it was over, Dad carried me to the car. The next thing I knew, I was home in bed. So that's what happened. My sister swapped my birthday for hers and I think it was one of the nicest things anybody could ever do. Good night. All right, scholars. I'm gonna put our book right there. And we're gonna talk a little bit about our book. We're gonna talk about the character, Lori, and what happens to her. I want you to think 
How does she feel about the birthday at the beginning of the story? What in the story makes you think that? What happens at the end of the story? And how does Lori feel about the birthday at the end of the story? Why do her feelings about the birthday party change? Go ahead and share your reasonings with your talk partner now. Wow, Lori has quite the experience with a birthday party in this story. I think it's so amazing how her sister Cookie thought about the fact that Lori never got to have a birthday party in the summer with their family and their friends all there to celebrate with her. At the beginning, Lori must have felt very anxious about Cookie's birthday because she wanted to get her the perfect gift. On page three, I'm gonna pull my book back out. On page three, it said, this year I wanna get Cookie my own present instead of just adding my name to whatever my parents were giving her. Only she's so much older than me, it's hard to find the right thing. That's what made me think she was feeling anxious. But her feelings changed because at the end, on page 19, she gets surprised with the birthday party being for her. In the text it said, Cookie explained, my birthday is in the summer. I always get a big party. Your birthday is in the winter when it's too cold. You never get one. I was so surprised I hugged my sister and ran to join the party. So that made me think that her feelings changed to her being very excited, surprised, it says in the text, surprised, or thrilled. Scholars, you may have used other feeling words to describe our character Lori in this text. And that's great, because oftentimes there's more than one feeling word that can be used to describe a character at any point in the story. You just need to use the text to support your thinking. All right. Go. Scholars, I'm very proud of your dedication to learning today. You are growing your brains so wonderfully. You are digging deeper into the main character of a text Visualizing what's happening to then think about how that character was feeling in different parts of the story. We're going to go further with this to, in our next lesson. Before we go, I want to go over your job to keep growing your brain with your independent reading, or IDR. You're going to get your Just Right books. You're going to read for 20 minutes, stopping every couple pages, and thinking about what's happening, and then making a picture in your mind. When you're done, you're going to share your visualizations of what was happening with your partner, your imaginary friend, and it looks like this. I am gonna be practicing this week with another one of my favorite books, Those Shoes, by Mary Beth Boltz. And as I was reading today, I marked my pages that I had visualizations. So on this page, it says, Brandon T. comes to school in those shoes. He says he's the fastest runner now, not me. I was always the fastest before those shoes came along. Nate comes to school in those shoes. Antonio, Antonio and I count how many times Nate goes to the bathroom, seven times in one day, just so he can walk up and down the hall real slow. Next, Alan Jacoby and Ter Terrence each get a pair. So then I stopped and I thought to myself, what was happening in this part? Jeremy is noticing that his schoolmates are each getting the same pair of shoes. He used to be the fastest runner and now he's not. His friends keep showing up each day. In the second page, it talks about how several people are in the lunch line with these new shoes. So I pictured in my mind that 
he would come into the classroom and, oh, another pair of those shoes are there. And he's feeling a little bit dismayed, disappointed. He wants those shoes. Then I would keep reading for another 20 minutes and practicing my strategy. Scholars, thanks for reading with me today. And I want you to enjoy your time reading. Go find a cozy spot and settle in. And I'll see you in our next lesson. <laughs>